Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat, episode number 672. And the topic, which is going to be provocative, I hope, is are you choosing a bad relationship over being single? And I'm going to break this down in a way that might suddenly go, ooh, when you think about it. So bear with me as I get to that. Before I jump in, let me choose myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. Just straight the camera, excuse me. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women. It also informs these talks that I've done now for over two years called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today is episode number 672. There's a lot of these out there. And the topic is on the theme of bad relationships over being single as a choice point because it's amazing how many people have suffered through relationships that didn't always start that way. And I'm going to give you some framing rather than being single and having something different. So there's a lot of judgment out there about people being single. First of all, I'm going to put that on the table because I do know quite a few people who um, look down from their lofty place of being in relationship at somebody who's single thinking they're missing out on something, which is kind of true. However, (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna be nice. I was gonna, I was gonna I was gonna be nasty, but I want to be nice. I don't want no. Well, yeah. All right. Let me reframe that a bit. <laughs> there are plenty of people in relationships that suck. Is the nicest way? Nice, is the polite way of putting it? There are people I know who are in long-term relationships because they got married. Maybe they have kids, especially. But even when they're not, they're just being in a relationship with somebody without the confines or or containment of wedding ring or children. That's one way of putting it are still putting up with a lot of crap when they deserve better rather than being single. Because for some people, somehow being single is a, I was gonna say like a plague. It's like, it's so suffering, it's so not clean. So they judge people as being single, there's something wrong with them because they don't wanna be, because they don't wanna be single, first of all. But frankly, for what I'm aware of, there's a lot of people, and I don't have statistics to back that up, just to be clear, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing the numbers. But there's a lot of people, that's I'm using generic terms, who are choosing a relationship as a way to avoid being single, no matter what quality of relationship they walk into. And this it has to stop. Basically, this is not working for a lot of people because to be in a relationship just to avoid being single is really a, a way to, I would suggest, avoiding being lonely, so going to be with somebody just to feel their warm body or feel loved. And that's a basic instinct. It's a survival instinct, really. But it's also an, I was say inappropriate, but an ineffective way of discovering what you really want. So let me break something, put some things in framing here. The assumption that being single, that you're somehow not being loved, is an error in approach. And I'll get to that one a bit later on. Because the reality is that a lot of people think the only way to get love is from somebody else. And I talked about this recently, so I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of this talk in a moment. At the same time, there's this thing about wanting to be next to a warm body. Now, obviously, when you're single versus being in a relationship, you're going to have a different physical proximity to other, physical and intimate proximity to other people. That's kind of obvious. But some people will choose partners to have that close physical intimate contact without any regard for anything else. So they won't be aware of or considering or thinking about, well, how's this person going to interact with me? Are we going to have any time to talk? Because actually, I know some relationships where it's only about the physical sexual contact without any verbal communication or minimal, just say, we're done, see you tomorrow sort of thing. But for a real relationship, and if you're watching my broadcast, you know that I'm very passionate about people having real relationships that are more authentic, empowered, inspired, and fulfilling. Great sex is only part of the, part of the equation. It's not everything. It's a good part of it, but it's only part of the equation. And the framework for that means that you have to build some level of rapport. I should say the requirements for that is you have to build some level of rapport and intimacy. That's a better quality of relationship than most people are actually dealing with. I watch people in relationships that are so hurtful, blaming, judging, wounding, that being single would make a better choice. So why do people choose that? I think a lot of it's tied into our wiring from childhood. 
we as adults are still carrying a lot of baggage from our childhood of what what is what is right what is wrong what's to be done what's not to be done maybe we come from a family where our parents were either are or were married for many many years and we think we need to copy that so somehow we're not whole or right until we're married or in a long-term relationship i carried that one around myself so i know that one pretty well because my parents have been together well they were together almost 60 years before my mother passed away so that imprint can run pretty strong as we're adults overriding our freedom to choose because we send a default into this autopilot program and choose relationships to try to mirror what we were raised with versus what we think we really want. I didn't follow the path my parents laid out that way. I've made a different choice entirely to live my life true to a values and purpose that are fulfilling to me and being single is part of my journey. Not the, I'm not planning to be single the rest of my life, although I'm okay with it being that way, but I'm very clear on my own path that that was important for me to have that place to find myself, to discover myself, to learn about who I was. And in the paradigm of bad relationship between being single, I'm a big fan of the being single as a focus because being in a bad relationship is not worth being in at all, at least not in my book. So in my messaging, in this talk, and in my reminder to you is if you are choosing to be in a relationship just to feel like you're a, a, um, achieving a goal, so to speak, because of some rules you have set up for yourself, you may want to look, step back and have a better look because you may find yourself in a whole different position. The choice of being single, admittedly you don't necessarily have the physical comfort of being with somebody in intimate circumstances, although I have lots of friends that I hug and connect with in social times, which is makes up for some of that. There's a recognition that there's another piece of the puzzle, which is self-love. For many people, that relationship out out there wherever that is is where the love lives not with them and so the constant seeking of finding a relationship however good bad or indifferent it is to be with somebody so they can feel loved is a perpetual driving um so we're looking for it's a it's a driving passion desire need that keeps them moving forward at the same time they choose relationships that don't give them the love they want to them the level they want and it gives them a lot of hurt suffering wounding along with it which is not what they want either now i'm going to break down the whole psychological piece because there are so many story, stories i've told this before about how we tend to repeat cycles from childhood with the people we get falling in love with so if we were witnessing abuse as a kid we tend to find abuse as an adult in relationships that's all a piece of my work i talk about as well and i've talked about that on facebook live a few times Oh, by the way, this is Facebook Live in case you're wondering if you're watching on YouTube. I just had mentioned that before. Second piece again about the self-love piece. And I'm, I've been pedantic about this for a reason. Because most people don't know how to love themselves. Excuse me. Most people don't love themselves. Again, they put the love out there in that future relationship that hasn't happened yet or isn't happening. And so they keep looking for the love to be filled from outside. And when you keep doing that, nine times out of ten, you're not really clear about what you're looking for. You're not standing truly in integrity with what you really hold dear because you're looking for love anywhere you can get it. It's almost like looking for a fix, like a drug addict. Drug addict. And I'm using that term intentionally because some people choose relationships from a very um, drug addict mentality. I've got to get somebody in my life so I can feel loved. And it's almost driven by that, which is insane. I mean, being addicted isn't healthy and nor is that way of treating love. So self-love first, loving yourself first, finding how to be in respect and caring for yourself as a single person because when you do that when you truly love and appreciate who you are you won't keep looking for bad love relationships like i mentioned in fact you'll set your standards much higher because you now know what you're worth in loving relationship because you love yourself enough to raise the standard of what you truly want to have in a relationship i hope this is making sense this is this is a paradigm shift for some people for some people it's like yeah of course we understand this which is great but a lot of people don't understand this, which surprises me. Well, it saddens me more than surprises me because there are so many people out there who have no idea that love comes from inside. They feel like love is out there somewhere, that somehow that person is going to come and save them, make them feel better, and save them from being single and lonely because that's the way they think life is. It ain't the truth. Frankly, being single is a much healthier place to be than being in a toxic, dysfunctional relationship. Yet, so many people 
which used to be in that relationship thinking it might be get it might get better it might be might be better eventually I might get loved more not true so being single is actually a better place to be especially when you learn to love yourself and yes I'll put a link in the comments for my self love practice because if you're not practicing self love meaning that you're not taking care of yourself loving yourself appreciate yourself every day I mean on the microphone there's some kids screaming outside they're playing with sound like they're playing with like um, scooters or something anyway stay to the topic at hand I can't, I'm not sure if you pick up that noise from the microphone or not because wearing a microphone isolates the sound a bit better so you may not be hearing it but I'm certainly hearing it off, off the camera so anyway self love being in the place where you love yourself it's amazing how people think that love comes from out there not from inside and I have been harping on this a lot because I'm pedantic about this is that the love that you really seek is inside of you Yes, it's great to share the love with somebody else and have love from them, but it's codependent, as I've said before, when you think the other person is going to fill you up with their love and you're going to feel okay. It's a paradigm that I think we need to outgrow. Now let me rephrase that. It's a, it's a paradigm I know we need to outgrow because we are absolutely in a place where we need to learn how to have autonomy in our own lives to love and appreciate that we, who we are as singles so then when we choose healthy relationships, we find conscious and awake single who's loving themselves meets conscious awake single who's loving themselves. They meet and they add to an expensive relationship. A truly healthy relationship is two singles who honor respect themselves and choose to join forces. Not looking for someone to say, you complete me, because that's, excuse me, that's bullshit. None of us are incomplete, but we think we are. And so we feel like somebody else is gonna love us and make us feel whole. And that's the trap we fall into. Why I'm so pedantic about my self-love practice and about loving yourself. Yes, obviously I want to promote the product because it works. But secondly is because the more we love ourselves, the more we break the cycle of thinking someone else is going to fix us, make us feel whole and make us feel loved. And that is a mission I've undertaken now for quite a while. And I'm passionate about helping you learn that if that's not something you know. Now, for a lot of people watching broadcasts, you already know this stuff, which is great. But for those of you watching my broadcasts and go, I don't know about this stuff. Start with self-love first. There's a whole bunch of other things I can talk to you about. And I would say, watch my other broadcasts because I've got a lot of content I put out there. Up to 672 broadcasts so far. And the self-love practice is fundamental. It's the core to my work more and more now. So again, I'll put the link in the comments for that so you can check it out and get started because frankly, it will change your life dramatically in 30 days. This is a 30 day practice, by the way. And more than that, it will give you an appreciation for who you are that will value, us, value who you are more than anybody else ever has ever done. Because when you love yourself that much, you then will you'll choose to find people that will love you that much as well. It raises the quality of relationships and raises the standard for what you really want. That, I think, is a worthy goal. And that's why I do this. So I hope this has made some sense because the reality is choosing a dysfunctional, unpleasant relationship just to feel loved, which is not really healthy love, and to have that versus being single, for me, there's no choice. I would never want to choose a dysfunctional relationship. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are those people being in long-term relationships where they have marriage or kids or something like that, where it's challenging to leave. But the reality is if you don't leave, you're setting up, one, you're, one, you're, gonna hurt, you're not you're gonna hurt yourself, but two, more importantly, you're actually going to be providing a poor example for your children because they're seeing that it's important to suffer in a relationship, which you don't want to do. So for their sake, as well as yours, sometimes to commit to being single, to leave the relationship is more important than stay. Now, it's a question that's individual to everybody. I'm not saying everybody should do that. But if you're in an abusive relationship or a dysfunctional relationship, you're not being loved and your partner doesn't want to get the help, because that's the other part, by the way, is if you're in a committed relationship, sometimes getting your partner to get help is important too. If you're not getting the results you want in your love life, and you're having a partner who won't shift, won't grow, won't change, it may be time to walk away. It's the hard truth I know, but it's the truth that some people need to hear. Maybe not you, but somebody you know. Oh, by the way, if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them or tag them in the comments, because maybe they'll get some value out of this too. Um, I think I've hit the nail on this so many times, it's embedded in the ground. So I think I'll, start, I'll wrap up this broadcast now, but I wanna make sure you get this point once and for all. Being single and healthy is much better than being ill in a relationship. Is that making more sense? 
Again, I've got the link in the comments for the self-love practice. I'll also put a link in the comments for a contact form if you want to reach out to me. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day on face at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook. And giving you a pre-program change announcement that this weekend is going to be all over the map because I'm staffing an event my friend puts on. My friend Deborah Kagan puts on an event called Rocket Mojo Weekend that starts tomorrow. And I'm shooting the whole event. I'm one of the, the only guys in the room with all these women. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I'm busy at that weekend, which means that I'll be doing my Facebook Lives wherever I can over the weekend, so they may not be at the same time. But I will do one every day. That's a, that's a standing commitment for, my, for, my, um, for you, my audience. So it is a Facebook Live I do first on my personal page, and then I put in my, person, my business page for backup, and then onto YouTube as well. I'll give you the link so you can find that. So first you go into my live page. If you want to watch me live, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Find me here live every day, um, usually 5 p.m. Pacific time except this weekend. And then I put my business page, which is on, which is uh, barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which if you are a YouTube, YouTube viewer, you can go subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. And then there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. There's 671 plus this one will be there t later on, which will be 672 broadcasts. So you can watch at your leisure and digest the information I suggest. So if you have questions or comments or thoughts about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, if you want to share this with anybody you think should watch this, please do that. Um, or share with any groups you have that you want to share it with as well. And um, priority is love. My focus is love. My encouragement is love. Loving yourself first allows you to choose relationships that are much higher than you've ever had before. And you deserve that. So with that, I thank you for watching. I do appreciate you being here. And uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.